This is your one and only warning. Your screen will soon be filled with dramatized stories of scientific research that some people may find controversial and disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Ask yourself the questions that should not be asked, experiments that should not be performed, or doors that should stay forever closed. In science, with good or evil intentions do not guarantee outcome. No matter how or why it is obtained, knowledge has a power of its own. May I present three stories of experimentation and unforeseen consequences. I'll introduce you to a Nazi super weapon. If you ever hear it, you're dead. You'll meet two brothers who listened to messages from space and uncovered a conspiracy of cosmic proportions. But first, meet a man whose faith in God was so profound he couldn't resist proving it with science. Do you need science to solve life's mysteries? Questions like, what happens after you die? Do you have an immortal soul? Is your faith enough to give you the answers you crave? Or do you need proof? Dr. Duncan McDougall believes that the soul exists. But to prove it, he'll need someone to die for him. McDougall has devised an experiment that requires a volunteer who will die on cue. But it's tough to convince people to take part. And his problems don't end once he's got past the front door. The director says you can have two minutes. Two minutes. One minute, 57 seconds. My name is Dr. Duncan McDougall, and may I ask you, do you believe that our Lord made us in his image, or are we, as many now say, just some kind of monkey? The theory of evolution has got everyone spooked. The idea that we're all just hairless monkeys isn't going down well. McDougall plans to close this gap between religion and science. In the 1900s, evolution was a very controversial idea in the United States because it removed man from the center of creation. McDougall set out to put man back. What McDougall was thinking is, okay, is there a way to demonstrate that we are fundamentally different from these other animals? And one of the things that religion would say uh, differentiates us is the existence of a soul. I wish to prove scientifically <coughs> that God gave us a soul. Please, let me explain. That's really enough. quite ingenious. That's Nurse, enough. Nurse, come on. I, you please. I can. McDougall's plan is ingenious but troubling. He wants to weigh people at the moment of death. McDougall wanted the soul, and the afterlife as well, in fact, to conform to the laws of science. The soul itself, if it's a body, if it's a thing, it must occupy space. And if it occupies space, it must have mass. According to scientists, therefore, if it has mass, it must have weight. How does this work out in terms of actually doing the experiment? Well. It, if the soul is a thing with mass and weight, when it leaves the body, quite simply, the body should get lighter. McDougall needs people about to die from tuberculosis. <coughs> or as it's known in the early 1900s. Consumption. Tuberculosis is a highly contagious, infectious disease, and you most often see it present in the lungs. And you can see here from this set of human lungs, this darkened T 
tissue and that represents damage that the bacteria has done to the lungs. When the lungs become damaged, you're not going to be able to get uh, the proper amount of oxygen into your lungs and then into the rest of your body. People with tuberculosis tend to die quietly, and that was really important for his experiments because when you're taking very fine measurements, you don't want your subjects flailing about. <laughs> McDougall's persistence pays off. The colorless consumptive home finally agrees to take a leap of faith. Good day. Good day. Doctor, we'd like to help. He, my husband, would like to help you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. He has his first subject. Patient one. But most scales big enough to take a human are not sensitive enough to detect the tiny change he's expecting when the soul departs the body. Most scales in the early industrial age, they were based on a spring. The spring moves as you pull on it, as the weight pulls on it. Our spring here, if I add a very large mass to it, will deflect substantially. Yet if I take a very small mass, Add it to the same spring, there's really hardly a change that we can gauge with this. McDougall takes his inspiration from a machine that weighs the finest of materials. A balanced lever arm works for silk, so why not for a sole? A lever arm is actually the perfect solution. Here's a very large mass. We have it perfectly balanced with this other weight. If we go ahead and we add this very small mass to this large mass, you can see there's actually a substantial deflection on the lever arm. By gauging that deflection, you can tell someone exactly how much that mass was, that very small mass, when added to the large weight. With these preparations in place, McDougall's moment is at hand. <coughs> The man labeled patient one is close to the end. All McDougall can do is watch and wait. And wait. If the lever arm on the scale drops when the patient dies, he will know weight has been lost. But it may not be that simple to decide when the patient is dead. The major problem that McDougall was faced with in his experiments was describing when the point of death occurs. When is the threshold between life and death reached? So is it a pulse? Is it a heartbeat? Is it neural activity? These were all things that McDougall had to decide before he could determine what death was. McDougall waits three hours and 40 minutes. No! No! Has he proved that the soul exists? Has McDougall used science to prove religion right? By weighing the body of a man as he dies, Dr. Duncan McDougall is attempting to prove what all good Christians know. That we humans have souls. body of patient one loses three quarters of an ounce of weight. 21 grams. But McDougall needs more lives in the balance. A single result could always be dismissed as experimental error. weight loss in his second and third patients. With his fourth patient, things don't go so well. Some believe what the doctor is doing is sacrilege. Ah, doctor. I trust you won't be much longer.
The hospital staff famously interrupted McDougall's experiment, and it could well be this quite powerful superstitious belief that actually the soul is being endangered rather than measured. And there were very powerful popular superstitions that the soul had to actually get out of the body at one level, and it had to get out of the building at another level. So it's not unknown for people in McDougall's lifetime to be opening a hole in a roof, to be opening windows. And that kind of superstition wrecks his fourth test. Ma'am, I must protest. You have just ruined the experiment. I'm so sorry. Oh. The next step records a loss in weight of three-eighths of an ounce. McDougal now has four samples, all have lost weight. Has he measured his patient's departing souls? Or has he missed something? Like any good scientist, McDougall then had to come up with alternative explanations for the weight that he had discovered um, in order to rule them out. Um, the obvious o um, option, of course, was the urine and the feces released by the, the subject upon death. Um, but he argued that these weights were taken into account because they were on the bed with the patient at the time of death. That's not the only variable. Could it be that he's just measuring the weight of their final breath? He spent some time on the scale himself, breathing out really hard <coughs> to see if that changed the way the, the scale registered, and it did not. So he accounted for those bits. <laughs> But McDougall's death watches don't sit well with the medical staff. Eventually, he's ejected from the home. He's forced to end his research. Excuse me, nurse. I need my... Thank you. Uncertain how to proceed, McDougall keeps his experiment secret for six years until, in 1907, the New York Times breaks the story is forced to publish. When McDougall published his results, people kind of went crazy. Uh, a lot of people questioned his methodologies, but they couldn't really offer any alternatives to account for the 21 grams that were missing. The Carlos consumptive home had been a lucky break for McDougall. No one else will give him a chance to continue his work. With humans, at least. McDougall moves on to a new area of research, aiming to prove that not only do we have a soul, but that it is a gift given only to humans. And his results are exactly as he might have expected. He finds that when dogs die on his scale, he records no weight loss. McDougall, I think, found what he wanted and what a lot of Christians would have wanted out of these dog experiments, that when they died, there was no set for weight loss, so no souls in animals. His results perfectly match the fundamental Christian belief that humans have souls, but animals don't. But is the underlying assumption behind his work flawed? Embedded in McDougall's argument and in his experiment is the notion that the soul actually has a weight in the first place. Now, that's an assumption that he makes, which he then confirms with some experiments he does, but there's a really big logical flaw living at the bottom of what he was trying to do. We know of many things that exist but don't actually have mass, photons being the prime example. As my scientific hero, Richard Feynman, would say, the first principle of science is to not fool yourself, and you are the most easy person to fool. McDougall knew the answer he wanted to get, and he got it. What a surprise. McDougall may have been trying to validate his own beliefs, yet the core question he asked still matters today. What is the soul? What is consciousness? What makes us, us? And this is a fundamental question, and one that's still at the heart of modern neuroscience. 
McDougall's research remains controversial. Were his experiments flawed? Did he make a basic technical error? Or is there something more to it that we don't yet understand?